أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد النبي الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فيما معنا ولا غائبا عنا شقيا ولا محروما I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he's gathering us here in his house to gather us, inshallah, under the, the, the shade of mercy, where there would be no mercy but His subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, the topic for, the tonight, for tonight is how deep is our children's understanding in Islam, or how deep our children' uh, Islamic knowledge. But before we talk about that, uh, I want to ask a question. How many of you were annoyed by the kid was shouting here? You know, uh, I learned something. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one time he was praying, and he uh, prolonged his, his sujood. He was in the sujood. So he prolonged it. Like a long sujood. And the companions thought that something happened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Something happened. So they were about to get up from the sujood. Maybe something happened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he got up from the sujood. And then after they finished, they said, Ya Rasulullah, khashina Ali, we are kind of worried about you. You, you prolong the sujood. He said, I'm not sure if he specified if it is Al-Hasan or al Hussein. I'm not sure. So he said, Qadir tahalani. One of my grandkids have jumped on my back. The word tahala is like when you ride on, an, on, a, on a camel or on a horse. He said, one of my grandchildren, irtahalani, have rode upon my back. Falam urd an astajila. I didn't want to rush him. Did you hear what I said? He said that I don't want to rush him. I want him to take his time to ride my back while I don't know how many 1,200, 3,000 people behind me in the sujood. So he said, I don't want to rush my child. I want him to enjoy his ride. And when he got off, I came out of the, of the sujood. Now I know children are, you know, loud and they're screaming and all of that. But I prefer my child to be in the masjid here. And we had, of course, you know, like I, I, I was raised in two cities. I was raised in Denton. That's what they call it. They call it Denton. They don't call Denton. That's only the, the fobs say that. Fresh out of the... <laughs> I told my daughter, I said, I am not a fob, I'm a fow. A foa, actually. Fresh out of the airplane. Never, we've never been in a boat. So, you know, I was raised there, and I was raised here in Richardson. Okay, I've been here for a long, long time. So I have seen that, and parents were like, you know, people say, Ya Akhi, you know, don't bring your children to the masjid. Ya Akhi, the children this. Ya Akhi, the children that. Another time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jazakallah khair. Another time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, Bismillah, given the khutbah. 
Now I want you just to imagine if our Imam did this, if the Khatib did this, what will happen to him? So he was given the khutbah and he saw Al Hussein came in, come out of the house, of his house. Fatima radiallahu anha was visiting. So she had the kids with her. So one of them, or two of them actually, Al Hassan and Al Hussein, came out of the, his room because remember, the rooms of the Prophet وسلم, were like that. These were the rooms, like that. Doors and door and door and a door and a door and a door and a door. So like you open the door, you get into the masjid. That's, that's how his house used to be. That's, that, these were his rooms. He had rooms, he did not have a house. Okay? So he, they came out of the house running, you know, tripping on his, with their own long clothes. They had a long clothes. So they were tripping. They get up and they trip, and they get up and they trip. So the Prophet ﷺ was here, and he saw them, and he came down from the member. Imagine now, he stopped the khutbah, and people say, where are you going? We have work. Time, time. Where are you going? Imam. So he went down, and he grabbed both of them. And he went back to the member. And he sat them there. And he said, what can I do? My heart was like aching when I saw them falling onto the ground. I couldn't take it. I have to pick them up. Now again, don't get me wrong. We don't want the kids to be running around here shouting and screaming and all of that. But I prefer my child to be raised in the masjid here. By the hook, by the crook. You know what they say, right? Rather than being outside somewhere. They hear the Quran. They hear the adhan. They hear the citation. Yes, he was maybe screaming. Maybe he's a little bit off. But the point is, when I am bringing my child, they, this has become their part of their life. My children were raised in the masjid. You know that. I know. You were raised in the masjid. I knew him when he was like so young. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, man. Now he's, mashallah, married, have children and everything else. All my kids have children, alhamdulillah. But what my point is, when you have these children running around, you know, you can, we, can, we can accommodate them. Accommodate them. And this, by the way, this is part of my talk tonight. Why our children have less knowledge. Okay? How did we get here? How did we get to the point that people right now are scared for themselves, for their children, for their deen? I see people even back in their bags and they are going to Turkey, they are going to... I'm not sure, you know, some other countries and because they said, I, I don't know. So one of the brothers who's like, you know, he's an African-American and he's from Atlanta. He said, where should I go? I'm from Atlanta. I'm from this country here. I, I don't know any Turkish language. I don't know. I don't know how to, I, I don't know where to go. You know, when people tell him, hey, go home. He says, I'm from Atlanta. Where should we go? We are escaping from the reality. And don't, don't tell me, I don't, you don't know anything. Yeah, well, I wasn't born here, you know. But I have four children and I have 11 grandchildren. Alhamdulillah. But I know. So how did we get here? Why, why this is happening to us right now? Okay? Remember these things. Four things can shape any human being. Four things can shape any human being. Home, school, media, and environment. Home, school, media, and environment. And you all agree that home has all four. The home has a school. You learn from your parents. Has media. They are the one who communicating with them. By the way, media is not only TV and radio and cell phone and tablets and all that. No. 
Media means any, any form of communication. So they are communicating with you. And then you have the environment. Your environment, that how you keep your children within the fold of the family. And you teach them, and you raise them, and you taught them, and you, you know, cherish them, and you upbring them, and, and all of that, all above. You know, the, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said, he said, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ he said, seven type of people, they will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will create a shade from the sun, from the heat of the sun for these four, seven type of people. Don't you want to be among those? Don't you love to be one of those? Absolutely, 100%. I don't want to be under the sun. But this is not the time for missing the hadith, but I'm going to take two or three things of the hadith. Now he said, Imam Adil, a, a just, you know, a ruler, or a just person, overall, okay? وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And a man, his heart is clinged into the masjid, like a chandelier. وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ And a child, or a young man, who was raised in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can you raise... An obedient person in the in the you know in the in the obedience of Allah, if he is not in the masjid, if he is not in a good community, how can you bring a man or a woman, of course, that their hearts is a cling in the masjid because they were young one day, we were not born fifty and sixty, right? So this is this is the 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 essence of it. So when the, that child is raised in that family. Part of the curriculum is the masjid. Part of the curriculum is the family. But we do sometimes, uh, 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 we, we, the way we raise our children, we are so scared, we just bring the kids to the masjid 24-7. These kids don't have, don't have a time to, to play, to enjoy themselves and what have you. You see, Umar ibn Khattab told us, he said, play with them for seven, teach them manners for seven, and be their best friend for seven. So zero to seven, seven to 14, 14 to 21. After 21, he said, let go of that leash. Because you have no right and you cannot control. I called my son, I said, hey man, I'm giving khutbah at INT. He said, that's okay, Baba, I'm praying at Mass. Okay, then you can't, you, you can't tell him, no, you better come here and listen to my khutbah. No, this is it. He is 38 years old now. That's it. He's like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't even, okay, fine. You know what? Yeah. You let go. You let go. But the, the original cradle that you had is that. Okay? So if not, then the school will take care of the children. Either Islamic school or public school or charter school or Montessori, or Montessori school or whatever that school is and whatever that knowledge that they gave that child, it will be a production for that child. But unfortunately, they're going to miss the boat big time. From zero to five, those are the most crucial time for the children. Someone will tell me, Akhi, you're telling me right now, my children are grown up and I'm 60, 70. I said, well, look, you still have big thing, which is the Prophet wasallam said. He said, this is the, the, the core of the ibadah. There is something called the core. Mukhu. Mukhu al-ibadah. What is it? What is mukhu? Mukh means the brain or the core. What is the core of ibadah? A dua. Do not give up dua. I don't believe in this 18 years old, get out of the house. I don't believe in 21. Who gave these, these ages? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave one age, which is what? What age is that? One age, huh? 
يا عم انت دارس يا عم انت يو ار لوك لايك يو ار ستديينج انت بيهايند ماي باك انت انت مذاكر ورانا ولا من تحت الطاوله انت الله 40 years old that's the only time the prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وبلغ 40 سنة قال ربي اوزعني ان اشكر نعمتك التي انعمت علي that's it no 14 no 18 for how long for how long i need to keep you know talking to my children for how long it doesn't matter till the grave You have to keep to your talking to your children. You have to pray for your children. You have to correct your children. They might correct you. Keep going with that process. Do not let go. If you are in a train, imagine you are in a train and the train has how many, what do you call it, carts? Huh? What do you call them? Fargans, carts? Fargo, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Compartments, whatever you want to call them. All of these. I have seen one time 120 of them. I counted them because I was waiting at the, to cross. I said, what am I going to do? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight. My God, 120. From the beginning, there was two engines. And from the back were two engines. They study it. They know. If you want to pull 120 Carts, you have to have enough power to pull and to push from the back. If one of them went off the track, just took one. Yesterday I was watching one of those accidents happen, I think Ohio or somewhere. Someone took a video of that. One, just one went off. What happened? The whole train gone. So do not put down your Do not, do, do not put down your guard. Okay? Again, what happened? For a long time, subhanAllah, Islam and the deen was the religion, was the culture, was the way of life of the society. Everything is ruling by the deen. For a long time, we had scholars, we had people who understand the deen. People, you know, could violate anything in their life but cannot violate deen don't mess with deen they say right the ulama they were available well known right they were like you know respected by all ages they had the authority of the deen you respect that society politically then came the second era I'm going to move all the way to 1500, 1400 something. There were colonization started. Colonization, what did they do? They invaded countries. They took their resources. They enslaved their people. They closed their religious institutions. They produced their own institutions. They opened their own schools. The English school, the French school. That this school and that school, right? Slaves, you will see them from India all the way to South Africa. Slaves to America. And these were, some of them were Muslims. Right? So, uh, basically, they reduced the knowledge with people. They created, you know, ignorant generation. Um... Uh, You know, no, no deen, no, no, nothing, nothing to learn. People start learning to do what? Trades, like, you know, being a, 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 a sell, to sell, you know, fruits or to, to fix, you know, horseshoes or be a blacksmith or like, you know, start taking the trades. People get off the knowledge base. Okay? And of course, they persecuted a lot of scholars. Believe me, go to the, the Skull uh, Museum in, uh, in France. Can you imagine if Muslims did, did this? France has a museum of skulls. These skulls belong to scholars and fighters against the French. They cut their head, they skinned it, and they took it back with them. They have a museum to go and visit and watch and see. You 
imagine if Muslims did something like that. So, do all that terrorizing people. So people start staying away from the deen. The Islamic people got scared. And then, of course, they introduced, uh, what do you call it, this deen. Uh, of course, when the, when the English came and the French came, like, you know, no hijab. I don't know if you've seen some of these movies or, or like, you know, pictures back in the 40s and the no hijabis. That's it. Hijab was almost gone, disappeared. Communism came in. Socialism came in. Uh, atheism came, on, came in. Uh, lose of identity, material, materialism, they put all of that. You know, technology bring all of this at that time. Okay? Few traditional schools left, uh, introducing you know extremism in both sides. Then you have you've heard all these you know groups of people destroying things in the name of Deen and Islam or, or Christianity or whatever it is, and they saw people adopting the the Western. In, in, our, in the Muslim country. Liberation movement started, uh, feminism, uh, I mean, you can go on and on with all these, like, you know, secular laws imposing uh, on, on, the, on the people. There's no more, like, you know, uh, Islamic laws, you know, floating around. Some colonization lasted for 120 years. You imagine how much damage would you do for, for certain you know, countries. And uh, so what did they leave behind? Ideas, languages. A lot of these countries in Africa, they speak French. That's their mother language. And you say, how, how, can you, how can you speak French? You, are, you know, like you know what happened like in Niger right now, for example. Like, it's, a, it's, a, it's just amazing, you know. That was so, so that was my parents' generation, the 1950s, 1940s, and then produced nothing but defeated generations. Worried about saving themselves and their families. Religion has no place in societies except in the masajids, only masajids. If you don't believe me, ask those who are from, you know, from Turkey, as those who are from Bosnia, from Albania, even from the Lebanon, Lebanon, from where my mother is from. They persecuted a lot of scholars. If you don't believe me, go to the, the Skull uh, Museum in, uh, in France. Can you imagine if Muslims did, did this? France has a museum of skulls. These skulls belong to scholars, and fighters against the French, they cut their head, they skinned it, and they took it back with them to France. They have a museum to go and visit and watch and see. You imagine if Muslims did something like that. So doing all that terrorizing people, so people start staying away from the deen. They kind of, you know, got scared. And then, of course, they introduced, uh, what do you call it? Less deen. Uh, of course, when the, when the English came and the French came, like, you know, no hijab. I don't know if you've seen like, some of these movies or, or like, you know, pictures back in the 40s and the no hijabis. That's it. Hijab was almost gone, disappeared. Communism came in. Socialism came in. Uh, atheism came, on, came in, uh, lose of identity, material, materialism, they brought all of that. You know, technology bring all of this at that time, okay? Few traditional schools left, uh, introducing, you know, extremism in both sides. Then you ha you've heard all these, you know, groups of people destroying things in the name of Deen and Islam or, or Christianity or whatever it is. And they stop people adopting the, cult, the Western culture in, in, our, in the Muslim countries. Liberation movement started, uh, feminism, uh, 
I mean, he can go on and on with all these, like, you know, secular laws imposing uh, on, on, the, on the people. There's no more, like, you know, uh, Islamic laws, you know, floating around. Some colonization lasted for 120 years. You imagine how much damage would you do for, for certain, you know, countries. And uh, so what did they leave behind? Ideas, languages. A lot of these countries in Africa, they speak French. That's their mother language. And you say, how, how, can, you, how can you speak French? You're, you know, like, you know what happened like in, in Niger right now, for example. Like, you know, it's a, it's a, just amazing, you know. That was so, so that was my parents' generation. The 1950s, 1940s. And then produced nothing but defeated generation. Worried about saving themselves and their family. Religion has no place in societies except in the masajid. Only masajid. If you don't believe me, as those who are from, you know, from Turkey, as those who are from Bosnia, from Albania, even from the Lebanon, Lebanon, from where my mother is from, you know, in some areas in the Middle East, Egypt, you know, some other places. So Muslims start not to pray, not to fast, drinking, gambling, okay? Uh, at that time, I remember in the, in the early 60s, it was me and my brother in the masjid. Only two kids. Kids we were not allowed to be in the masjid. Only old people. That's it. And if you are in the wrong time, if you don't tell them that you are the son of the imam, you will be beaten up and kicked out of the masjid. You imagine, for those kids that are listening to me right now, we survived. We are a survivor of that generation. Okay? The, um, the children used to come to the masjid only during Eid day and maybe Fridays. Maybe Fridays. Parents did not care. Okay? I remember my experience in America when I first came here in 1979. When I first came here, I, rem I saw some brothers who are coming from a Muslim country. They don't pray, they drink. And I know some of them, they don't know how to make wudu. They, those people came from a Muslim country. Okay? Why? Because the families. I'm going to go back again to the family. The family did not do their job. The job happened from the school, and the media, and the radio, TV at that time, and in the, uh, in the society. Okay? Then we moved to, like my, my, my uh, when I first came here, we had only like one masjid, I think. It was in the, the one in South Dallas, you know. And then in 81, I think we had the first masjid in, in Denton, and one in, uh, in uh, I think, in Fort Worth, and then one in Arlington, and then here in INT. And the masjid started spreading around. And in the 90s, I remember 89, 90, we started the first school here in, New, in the Dallas area, which is called the Brata Horizon School. At that time, it used to be Brata Horizon School. The Ghazali School in New Jersey and some other areas. Of course, in New York, and those are like have more Muslims at that time. But still, they were not so like, very active like the way you see it today. Okay? But at the same time, you look at all of this, and, and these children, they are the product, we are the product of our parents. I was blessed that my father was an imam, and a khatib, and a scholar. But I'm looking at others, like my cousins, for example, or my neighbors, and what have you. We were like looking at them like, you know, they are, well, they're from different planet. They, they never prayed, they never maybe fasted, maybe they fast. Fasting was something normal to be with people, you know. <clears throat> and then we raised our children. We got married, and we had our children. And to tell you the truth, 
When I got married in 83, I'm giving you dates now. It was so scary for me. Because there was only one masjid in Denton. And I said, my children has to be raised in the masjid. And of course, at that time, you try to talk to parents. Parents look at you like, what are you doing? Why are you bringing your children to the masjid? Why, why you wanna, you know, uh, confuse them? One of the sisters used to tell me like, why are, you, why are you forcing your kids to pray with you? I said, I'm not forcing them. I said, yalla ya habibi, let's come, you know, let's come and let's pray together, all of that. She said, no, you are forcing them. They let them choose their way. Yes. Look, I mean, I disagree with that statement. But in the same time, I don't want my child to hate Islam. I don't want my child to hate deen. Because some of us, we used to force our children to come by, you know, by force. Sometimes they beat them up to come to the masjid. I said, why? Why didn't you talk to your children? They said, my father never talked to me. Well, guess what? Your child is not the same as you to your father. Never ever compare your relationship with your child to your father's to you. Never ever. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, that take, you know, raise your children for a time, not your time. For a different time. For a future time. And then what happened is, we produce children that they, you know, in the, the modern era, religion become a personal issue. It's a personal thing. Why I'm saying this? Because what happened is, we remember our children when they are 14 years old. Oh my God, my child is not praying. Oh, my child is not this. My child is not that. I want to give you an example. A lot of us have children who goes to high school. And wallahi, let me tell you something, because I know some of the brothers here, they've been here for a long time. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to put down anybody. But this is how life it is. That's how life, you know, some people, they, they got it from the beginning. Some people got it in the middle. Some people got it in the, in the end. We all try to fix things here. We're not trying to point fingers. Oh, look, you look at you, man. You, you did not raise your kids. No, 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 no. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Wallahi, when my wife sometimes tells me, do you know, have you heard about this girl? I said, Umayman, please, let's not talk about anybody. Of course, she's not the one who talks, but she's telling me like she heard it. I said, and she was like, oh, someone first, like, post on the Facebook, like this girl took off her hijab. And I said, please, wallahi, we have children. And I'm scared for my children when I hear these stories. I say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our children. You know what I mean? So, so when, when, when I talk, when, when, when I see this, you know, this issue happening, uh, you know, as, as these children, like 14 years old, and you just remembered, oh, I have to raise my child. Then you force him to come to the masjid. And you do this and you do that, and that will fire back at you. We have to understand the mentality of our children. You know, people blame the children. And I say, why are you blaming the children for? Where the children came from? From heaven, from sky? They drop at you? You raise them. Maybe we failed the way that we raise them sometimes, but still again, there is always a chance. Nuh alayhi salam did not give up, even to the point that his son was outside the ship. And he knew that whoever outside the ship is gonna drown. He said, Ya bunayyar kabmana. He's a kafir, he's a Muslim. He said, even with that, jump into the ship. Let's talk. He still have the dialogue. I'm going to go to a highest mountain. I will be saved. No one will be saved outside the ship. Jump into the ship. To the point that he died and he drowned. So Nuh alayhi salam, because I want to tell you this, some parents tell me, Ya akhi, our children, my child is like the son of Nuh. I said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So how long took you to, you know, to neglect him and throw him out of the house? When you knew that he's no good, he's not a good Muslim and all of that. How long it took you? 
a month, two months, one year. I said the Prophet Muhammad took him 950 years. 950 years. Even with that, he still did not give up on his son. And he, what's better than knowing this? Again, I'm not in people's shoes. I'm not. One brother told me one time, he said, I don't think my daughter is a Muslim anymore. I said, what did you do? He said, I told her, you're out. I said, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What did you do? Fa'anta shaytan alayya. Now shaytan is all over her. And she doesn't know where to go, now she's going to find her way out. Is that correct? But the problem is, these children nowadays, this is, you know, they say, my religion is how I define it. Have you heard this before? Nowadays they say, this is, that's my religion. I know you raised me up and all this stuff, but this is my way of life. This is my life. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, that's the way I'm going to, you know, believe in it. My decision, okay? No one has any impact, okay? My parents can only suggest things to me. But do we cut that communication with them? Never. I beg you. Never do that. No matter what. No matter what. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us, Allah is going to ask us, وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ مَسْؤُولُونَ Don't get deluded with this 18 years old, 20 years old. Oh my God, you know, my, my child is 18 years old. He's out of the house. He's on his own. No, my brothers, no. No. Because you always, why? Because in يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ you say, مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ He says, the only I am doing this. So when I stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says, Ya Rabbi, I have done all what I can do to guide my children to deen of Allah. That's all, what I, that's all what I'm trying to do. Okay? The third or the fourth thing is the expansion or the expanding of the religion freedom. Now people have more access to the media. Remember the house? Now it's gone. The school, they're out of the school. They went to college. And I want to give you an example. I forgot to mention that example. Quickly, I gave this example. I said, how many of us had their children in high school? Some of us, many of us. How many of us have children in the 9th to 12th grades? How many of us on Friday, we go and we pull our children to pray Jumu'ah with us because they are balig. You know what's balig, right? They are mature. They have reached level of puberty. Even including sisters in this country, not overseas because overseas is different a little bit. But here, if I can pull my daughter also, I will do that. If you remember some of you, we used to pull our children from Berkner High School and bring them to the Collins Musallah. Maybe some of you remember or some of you don't remember. We used to pull 60 students and then the principal came and she said, you cannot do that. I said, watch me. And I came to Shaykh Yusuf, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the best in this life, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I said, Shaykh Yusuf, we have a dilemma. That's the situation. Our kids are balig, they are mature, and I need to pull them to pray Jumu'ah. He said, what do you need? I said, I need a letter from you. So he wrote the letter. And I took it to the principal. She said, can they do it after? I said, no, in the winter time, there is no way they will miss Asr. So I fought for my, the children. And when the other children saw this, they said, we can leave the school. I said, yeah, for one period, but you have to come back. Because it is on you. Don't blame me for this. So they used to leave the school and go. Even when they had you know, uh, exams. By the way, all my children graduated and they have jobs, alhamdulillah. You know that? He knows this. 
Why I'm saying this? Because after high school, what is it? What comes after high school? College. And then when college come, your children, your children were actually in high school for how long? Four years. For four years, they did not perform a single Friday except holidays. And when they go to college, you tell them, did you pray Juma? He says, what? What Juma? What Juma? You are giving them precedent. You're telling them Juma is more, not important. Your school is important. Your degree is important. Your college is important. Your good grades are important. Did they graduate it? Did you graduate it? You did. We did graduate it. They did graduate. In fact, that was a, there was a joke. <laughs> uh, one of the non-Muslims started coming out, coming out with us even. And I said, you cannot do that, man. They want to go to the mall. Because the mall was across. Richardson Mall was across. I said, you cannot do that. And I was sitting there. And then the, the, the principal said, you know, let me tell you something. We cannot do this. You know what? I'm going to give them the library for 15 minutes on Friday. So they can do their Friday. I said, thank you very much. That's a victory for me. Isn't that true? That's victory for me. And then others that they were afraid to leave, they start joining Friday. Till Dallas Morning News got hold of the story. I said, prayers in the school? You need to stop this. Nonsense. So I told the principal, guess what? 60 are coming out of the school again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because brothers and sisters, when we are crying every day and we say, you know, I don't know, I, I lost control, I'm not in control and this and that. And I said, well, for those who have still young kids, don't be harsh on them. Make them understand the deen. You see, we came from understanding the deen, to practicing the deen, to imitating the deen, to then no deen. To question the deen, actually. To question the deen. Why do we pray? Why do I have to wake up for Fajr? Why do I have to go for June? Why do I have to fast? All my, my, my friends in the, in the school are not fasting. They're all having lunch and I'm sitting in the, in the classroom doing this. That's not fun. Islam is not fun. Well, make it fun. Make it fun for them. Make them, you know, very, very happy and attached to the deen by you practicing it and you showing them. What time do I need to stop? I'm sorry? And then it's 9.37? Can we like just stop at 9, 9.45, 9, just make the other and pray or something like that? What time do I pray? 9.50? You pray at 9.50? Okay, inshallah. Pray. Okay? So, people say, Akhi, I, I need to put food on the table. I hear this from some people saying, you know, I need to put food on the table. I mean, I, I don't know what, there's no time for me with, with my kids. I said, well, look, you know that I, I like what uh, one of the motivational speakers said something beautiful. SubhanAllah, this guy is not a Muslim. He said, you know, the C comes between the B and the D. <laughs> it's like something that he invented, you know. The C comes between the B and the D. What is the B? He said B is for birth. And D is for death. And C is for choice. And he gave beautiful, beautiful example. He said you could be an oak tree. An oak tree can produce toothpicks. They are the best toothpicks in the market. They don't break very easy. And they are really, even they are so thin. But how much would you pay for a toothpick? I mean, he gave the example. He said, pennies. Or you can make wood because it takes a long time to burn for the oak trees. 
You don't have to spend a lot of money. The bundle is 10, bu 10 bucks. Or you could be a dining table worth of thousands of dollars. And excuse me for the next you know, example because he gave the example. He said, you could be a violin. Could be sold for $2.5 million. So your choice, you know, you are the one who decided that whatever it is more important and I'm sending my kid to Islamic school or I'm sending him or I'm, I'm doing something at home but then something happened ya Sheikh and then I tried all my best I said that's fine the bottom line is and, and, and please this is so important the bottom line is do not give up till that person that even if they are dead you can still make dua for them unless they are not Muslims Allah alam but alhamdulillah, I never have experienced this in any of the families. Because brothers and sisters, today, the challenge, and I'm not going to go into this, you know, LGBTQ and all that, you know, nonsense and what have you, the transgenders and all this. I'm not going to go into that. Do AI and all, I'm not going to go to that. I'm going to go to the core. The core is the house. I'm going to go back again to the what I have started with. The home. Okay? Home. Open discussion. He said, discussion with who? With my five years old? Yes. My father never did. Please do not mention your father in this, in, in, in this, in, you know, in this conversation. I'm not being disrespect to my fathers. Look, my father, your fathers, you, you, any of those who have white beards, I'm not sure about you. <laughs> you know, not you, man. No, not you. You know, it was a one-way street. Isn't that true? Like you are in a soldier in a camp. Do this, do that, bring this, bring that, eat, drink, go to sleep. Isn't that true? That's it. When was the last time you touched your dad? Even touch him. That's it. The closest is either his forehead or his arm. That's it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hug your kids. Love your kids. You know, cherish them. Speak with them. You know, they say it takes 20 minutes every child every day to speak to. Ask them what happened in the school. Do you know what is happening in your school? Do you know the, the home teacher of your school? Do you know the teacher of the classroom that their kids in? Have you, have you visited their school? Have you visited their classroom? Did you talk to the teachers? How do you think these children will, will, will be brought up if you don't know what's going on in the school? There's a lot of, unfortunately, bad things happening in the school. I'm saying this again. Bad morality. Speeches, the way they talk to the children, the way they say things to the children. You need to really open that conversation, okay? Why ask your children? The Prophet ﷺ was asked, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُؤْمِنَاتُ مُهَاجِرَاتٌ فَامْتَحِنُوهُنَّ Always test your children. Today I, had a, I have a trivia with my, with my grandchildren. We were like, we were having lunch, lunch. And I said, okay, who was the prophet who was swallowed by the whale? Huh? Uh, 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 Yusuf. I said, no, no, not Yusuf. Very close. They will remember these, these times. They will remember how you're interacting with them. Seven years is to play with them. Enjoy their life. Enjoy them. For another seven years, teach them manners. Ya ghulam, sammi allaha, wa kul bi yameenika, wa kul mimma yaleek. Say bismillah and eat from front of you. The way you talk, the way you speak, the way you do this, the way you do that. When they are 14, they are at that time full of energy and their hormones are start changing. You have to be their friend. I tell my kids, I said, listen man, if you don't tell me what's going on, I'll find out and I'm not going to like it. So you better tell me. Anything bad happen in your, in your life. Don't be hard on your children. 
Don't be brothers and sisters, don't be hard. Let them open for you, let them open up for you. You know, I, 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 had a, I, I was visiting one of the brothers and I was talking to the kids, and I'm gonna stop here inshallah. You know, I was talking to one of, some of the kids, his kids, and after I left, my, the, my, my friend called me and he said, he said, can I, can I, can I talk to you for like, for, can I talk? I said, yeah, sure. He said, you know, I'm not sure what have you done. You came to my house. You start talking to these kids. And it's like, I haven't seen these children act the way they act before. I said, what do you mean? He said, they never told me anything. They never tell me anything about their life. You were there for, for an hour and a half. They told you the whole story about their life. I said, why do you think that? The Prophet ﷺ told us, when you speak to people, speak in their level. Don't speak from the top. If they are 13 years old, you have to look for the 13 years old talk. If they are 9 years old, you have to look for the 9 years old talk. If they are 7 years old, you have to talk to the 7 years old talk. You have to do that. Don't talk to them as if they are from college, they graduate from college. Oh, you don't know this? Your cousin know this. How come you're, you're not excelling in school? Your cousin is doing, look how he's doing in school. Never ever compare your children to the others. Never ever put down your children. You took, it took you forever to name your children. And now your, name, your child's name is, hey, come here. That's the name of your child, hey. His name is not hey. He has a beautiful name and you, and you took, took you forever to find the name for him. Isn't that true? Yeah. I mean, I can go on and on and on, and time, is, time is, is the essence, subhanAllah. But you know what? Our community is expanding. And unfortunately, some of this stuff, that it is not good happening, it is crawling into our community. And if we do not protect our gardens, like one of the scholars, he said, your home, your life is like a garden. Either you put flowers and make it nice and beautiful or pest control and destroy everything. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to really um, raise our children correctly. And by the way, I do seminars for like uh, building a, a strong character for our children, challenges that facing the community or the parents. And I know this talk is to the parents, by the way. Don't bring me your child and tell me, uh, you, please talk to my child. No, I want to talk to you first. I want to see what you have before I talk to your child. So inshallah, we will continue in this. Jazakumullah khair for giving me the opportunity to be here. Inshallah, jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi ta'ala wa